This next guy, I have quoted him many, many times on this program. I think USA Today does a great job with a database. and the, the guy that's really behind a lot of this is Steve Berkowitz. And uh, Steve, I, I just feel like I owe you a big thank you because uh, doing a college football show in Tuscaloosa, man, your work is quoted uh, quite frequently. It's, been a, it's great to be able to catch up with you here on the game. Thanks a lot. No, thanks for the kind words. Thanks for having me on. Well, it, it, I know it's a lot of work. I mean, I, I can only imagine what what it's like when you, when you begin to kind of put these databases together and probably the resistance that you get of trying to get some of these figures and trying to compile this data. Uh, you know, schools are reasonably cooperative. I mean, you know, the, the public schools have to provide all this information. We use it all from open records laws. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I, I have help and, it takes it's a, it's a lot of elbow grease, and so you know you do you do what you got <laughs> do what we got to do. Sure. Well, and and, and I, I think it's uh, you know it's all something that we enjoy, and and I, I want to pepper you with some questions around college football dollars. But let's start in California. I know you've had some tweets about this. Uh, you've written on usatoday.com. California schools uh, could be banned if bill passes. It looks like this bill is going to move in the direction of passing. Can you give us the latest from California? Sure. Uh, the, 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 so the bill would, uh, this was a bill that would allow uh, college athletes to be able to make money uh, off their name, image, and likeness. So these be athletes at schools and who were, who were at schools in the state of California. Um, it would go into effect in January of 2023. So there's still quite a bit of time here for things to happen in between. Um, and uh, where it stands now, the California State Senate has, has approved it. It's now moving through the Assembly. Uh, it's been through one committee in the Assembly and been passed. Uh, another committee is set to consider it uh, in about uh, 10 days. Uh, if that committee passes, passes it, it would, the, the uh, California Assembly will go on a summer recess uh, for the most part of, back part of July and early August. But then they would again take it up in one last committee, uh, and then uh, if it keeps moving forward, it would go to a floor vote, uh, which would be probably, I would assume, toward the end of August. Uh, if the bill remains intact, they may not have to have any sort of conference committee in the Senate. Uh, so if that were to happen, it would then move on to the governor. Uh, and I would expect that if it passes the assembly, uh, I would expect the governor to sign it. When you talk to some of these administrators in athletics out in the state of California, what's kind of the reaction? Uh, it's varied. Um, I mean, there are there were there were representatives from a couple of schools, plus people from the University of California system, the CSU California State System, uh, and uh, an association that represents private schools. Uh, but you know, folks, there was a representative there from Stanford University who said that. You know, they were they don't think that necessarily the current system, uh, wherein athletes have no ability to make money off their name, image, and likeness, that's that's something that's worth talking about. Uh, they're just not, you know, they're, they they would do not want to see a circumstance where California does this unilaterally. Um, so it's not being the notion of, of a change in the current setup. I don't think is being dismissed out of hand, but I think people in California are definitely uh, very uncomfortable. Schools in the state of California are uncomfortable about the idea of California being alone uh, in this regard. Obviously, the fear is that if nothing changes in the NCAA or there isn't uh, a level of change in the NCAA that mirrors what's going on or comes close to what's going on in California, that those schools will be ineligible to participate in NCAA championships. Um, and so obviously that's their big, that's the big fear there. Um, so you know that you know, I think that's sort of the general, the general stage, general thinking about it out there. Steve, do you believe the NCAA and Mark Emmert? I mean, do you, you think this is a bluff, or, or do you think this is true? Well, I mean, I, it, it, it's not a bluff in the sense that the NCAA's rules are pretty clear on this point. You know that the, the athletes are not allowed to do this. So if you have a conflict between the state the state law. And the NCAA rules, and under state law, athletes are then, you know, taking money for their name, image, and likeness. Under the NCAA's current rules, they're ineligible. Now you can, you know, see where this goes in terms of litigation and, and everything else. But, you know, the rule, I mean, the schools make the rules. I mean, I know Mark Emmert speaks for the association, so I don't think Mark Emmert wrote that letter 
you know, unilaterally on his part. I'm sure there was discussion about this with other people uh, who were in the higher reaches of governance there. But, you know, that's the way that the schools have the rules. So, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, are they, yes, yeah, sure, are they trying to save a rattle to get people's attention in the hope of not having to do this and defending their, what they think is their right to make their own rules, then, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily an, an idle threat, but, you know, if push, if push came to shove on this, you know, I think it would end up in the court. Steve, when you look at college football salaries, assistant coaches, are are we still on an incline uh, or are we, have we leveled off? Where, where are you seeing coaching salaries in college football? Coaches and assistant coaches, are we still increasing? Yeah. I, I don't see any I, – I see no evidence to the contrary, put it that way. I mean, and, and as uh, school revenue increases, uh, salaries will – you know, unless something really dramatic changes, like if you saw some degree of antitrust, protection for colleges in this area, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers are going to go up. I mean, there's always going to be a school that is willing to pay somebody above what is the current top of the market, which will then move the market for everybody else, whether or not that's rational, rational or reasonable or anything else. That's a different, that's a different conversation. But, you know, if the money is there, they're, they're going to get it. They're going to get paid. And, those numbers, I you know, uh, again, unless something dramatic changes, those numbers are only going to keep going up. Well, Steve, when, when I look at the question of, of college finances, when you look at attendance and the numbers, it, it seems like the revenue might be shifting towards the TV side of things. I, I, is that the case, or is money still made up by attendance? I mean, where does the biggest percentage of profits come from these athletic departments? Is it the TV side of things, or is it tickets, or – uh, endorsements. I mean, where, where does the biggest percentage of money made from these college uh, athletic departments? Yeah, I mean, there there are some schools where the ticket revenue is you know is 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 a is a component that is close to the television component, um, but that's for schools with really big stadiums. I mean, you know, like the hundred thousand seat stadiums. I mean, Alabama is a school like this because also the, the schools with bigger stadiums and more popular programs have the ability. To you know, have those tickets not just be the, the ticket prices, but also donations that are associated with the right to buy those tickets. So you know, the, the ticket piece of it is still a really, really significant part of the of the revenue picture uh, because you have not just the, the ticket prices, but the donations. But the television piece of it is getting bigger all the time. And in the SEC, while you know, the SEC schools were ahead of the Big Ten schools. The SEC is coming up on what everybody perceives to be is going to be a renegotiation uh, and likely, I presume, an extension of their deal for the television package for football with CBS, which, you know, is going to, you know, there's, it's hard for me to imagine that the conference won't be getting a lot more money from CBS than it's currently getting for that package of games. So you think that money goes up, even though we've had some cord cutting and and things like that, that that influences that you, you think that money continues to rise absolutely yeah i mean the, right now the money that that cbs is paying for those games in the current in the current environment is an unbelievable bargain for cbs and you know i mean sec football uh because of the incredible fan affinity uh and you know the population and the footprint of the conference and just the general popularity of sec football uh, you know, it's an incredibly valuable television property at a time when, you know, people are it's harder and harder to get people to watch live events. And those events are, you know, those SEC football games are big deal live events that people will watch in real time as opposed to, you know, getting them on video and then watching them later and going through the commercial. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, there's, there's very little doubt in my mind that there's going to be more money there for the conference. Steve Berkowitz is USA Today, financial, college football, NCAA legal and financial issues, who does a lot of special projects, and you can follow his work uh, by Berkowitz on the Twitter account, USA Today. Steve, I, I don't know if we have a sample size yet, because the tax law is my understanding it it, it ended uh, and changed uh, at the end of last year. The, a lot of these donations are no longer uh, tax 
it's deductible. I think what it was, 80% you could write off. You know, you give somebody a thousand bucks, you could write off 80% of that. Uh, those tax laws have been changed. Do we have a complete sample size? Are those donations going down because of the new tax structure, or, or is it just too early to tell? I think it's still early to tell. Okay. I mean, the, because the, the, the issue here is that you had a lot of schools that in, really strongly encouraged their donor base to make donations in advance while they were still clearly deductible. So getting a true handle on the sort of the washout and what the final impact of those uh, of that of that law on donations is something you'll begin to get a picture on, you know, over the course of this coming this year and the, and the, in the coming year, I think people will begin to get a better handle on it. Um, you know, again, I think it's really hard. It's really hard to tell. And I think, again, at, at school, I mean, for schools like Alabama, I think, and for Auburn, you know, I think those schools are going to be more, uh, you know, more immune. I want to actually say lower, less impacted by this because people are going to be reluctant. People are not necessarily looking for a tax donation when they're making those donations to get tickets. They're looking to be able to get tickets. And if somebody, you know, drops their tickets because they don't want to make the donation because the tax piece of it makes it untenable, uh, you know, there are lots of people who are standing in line ready to take up, take over those tickets. So, um, you know, at some places, I think there may be greater impact than others. But, um, you know, again, I, I think it's really hard to say at this point what that you know, where they just sort of quantify what that looks like. Yeah, and I just wonder, I mean, with something that we discuss here quite often, and we take a lot of phone calls, we're a caller-friendly program, I hear a lot of complaints from my audience, the price of tickets. I mean, like, for for example, Duke, uh, for Alabama and Duke over in Atlanta, is $200 uh, to go watch Alabama, 32-and-a-half-point favorite, take on the Duke Blue Devils in Atlanta. The ticket prices, they continue to go up, and I, I often ask the question, when does a 65-inch LED television win out and people just say, forget it, I'm not going to buy any tickets, I'm just going to sit in front of the television. Not that you're going to ever look at an empty Bryant Diddy Stadium, but uh, that is definitely a competition factor, the 65-inch LED television. No, and that's a big deal. And again, when you have a stadium that seats 110,000 people or 100,000 people, you know, and you're building your athletic budget, you know, with certain, you know, and you've been accustomed to certain ticket revenue, you know, it's like if you draw 90,000 people to the game instead of 100,000 people to the game, you know, it's still a gigantic crowd. But that difference in 10,000 people, you know, between the, the money spent on the tickets as well as money that would be spent on parking and food and whatever else, uh, you know, that's a you, now you're talking about some serious money. And that adds up over seven home games. So, yeah, I mean, this is for sure a concern for athletics directors. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, the elasticity of the sell of the ticket marketplace is definitely being driven by the idea that, you know, that there's a really good experience to be had watching the game at home on your, what on your, uh, you know, uh, 4k, uh, you know, HD screen. <laughs> so, you know, and you know, the bed line for the bathroom at law at home, probably not quite as long as it is the ballpark. A hundred percent. Steve. Final couple of questions. I mean, I'm always fascinated. I could sit here and talk to you for the next hour about these financial numbers. I think it's fascinating when we look in the study of college football and where we're going or where we've been and kind of project the future. When you look at basketball and you look at football, when you talk about generating revenue, is is most places around, is it still basketball is, is behind football and generating revenue? Or do you see some places that uh, basketball is bringing in some revenue that is comparable? Uh, to football? Uh, the number of schools where men's basketball would be, you know, producing revenue, you know, in the neighborhood of football would be, you could count them probably on one hand. Um, and, you know, when you count, the, depending on how you value uh, the, the piece of a conference revenue share and how much of that you attribute to football, uh, you know, and there might be, you know, no comparison, but places like Kentucky and Kansas, uh, where the tradition of, of basketball is really substantial, Louisville, uh, there are a handful of those schools where basketball has so much cachet um, and the tickets, again, generate those uh, donations, uh, you know, that it, it, it's, it's potentially a little, it's, it's close to comparable. 
And those are places, too, where football hasn't been quite as big a deal. I mean, Kansas had a few, has had a couple of up years, maybe a decade ago, but the football program has been not very good, and people haven't come out to see the games. Kentucky has been good in recent years with, uh, with Stoops, and, you know, Louisville was doing, was, it was on an uptick until last year. Um, so it, it, those places, North Carolina would be another school where basketball revenue is, is pretty substantial, but by and large, Football is the big, football is the big revenue driver. No, you know, for pretty much everybody. Wow, it, it's fun to be able to dive into these numbers. Uh, final question: I was reading an article a couple of days ago, and I know we quoted this, but Mark Emmert makes two point nine million dollars was his net pay in twenty seventeen, and I think those are some of the latest figures. Uh, it's hard to have this conversation about likeness, image, and name, and all that when you look at a president making that type of money. Well, all right. First of all, Emmert's the, the amount of money that was that was credited to Emmert on the most recent tax record for the NCAA takes into consideration a out the the uh, the payout of a deferred pay uh, piece that was building over a period of years. So that all paid out at once um, in that in, in that year. So I got you. That's a little bit. That figure for this year for Mark Emmert is a little bit. Mis- Leading. Okay, so in fairness to him and to the association, you got to take that into account. That's what, what, not, what is the salary? That's, I mean, that's not as typical. That's not as typical compensation. The typical compensation has been in the neighborhood of one point seven to two million. I mean, and that's you know that's for sure. That's serious money, and that's you know that's, that's real money. But you know, the, you know, there are commissioners and other of conferences that make more money. I mean, Larry Scott, the Pac-12 commissioner, makes double, more than double that. So, but there's but to the bigger issue, there's no question that the compensation that is paid to uh, coaches, to athletics directors, to conference commissioners, uh, those kinds of numbers. Uh, when you and you go back to the name, image, and likeness issue in California, those the, the salaries paid to those people is one of the driving factors in the minds of legislators who look at this as being you know an, an, an imbalanced situation when it comes to. Uh, the compensation that the athletes can get. And the athletes do get compensation. You know, the athlete college scholarship is compensation. And whether or not that's a, you know, that's a fair amount of compensation, you know, depends on the sport. But yes, there's no question that the salaries that are being paid, uh, you know, people, people notice that and they are, and, and that does drive some of the conversation that's going on here. Hey, Steve, I'm sorry I went a couple of minutes long, but I, I'm really fascinated by a lot of these numbers and uh, kind of crunching these. I know you do an awesome job. Like I said, we quote it quite often here in Tuscaloosa, whether it's the database at usatoday.com or maybe your tweets, a lot of great information uh, coming via the Twitter account by Berkowitz. Uh, Steve, as always, thank you for your time. I've, I've enjoyed the conversation here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, same, no, same here. Thanks a lot for having me on.